Under the umbrella of tough lessons learned, you better watch out. And that time, Daniel Lanois, with his engineer, Mark Howard, watching it all, tried to mimic Bob Dylan. It did not go down well. This is Rock History Music. I'm John Bowden. What was time out of mind with Dylan like? What was that experience like? Okay, you're back in. Uh, yeah, that, that was well, a big album. Holy moly. Well, it's, it started off as... Um, uh, Bob had asked us to to mix uh, a live show that he had done. So it all started like, you know, Bob coming out. I had this theater in Oxnard, California called the Teatro. And it was a 1940s Mexican porno cinema that I renovated <laughs> into, made it into a studio. I took all the seats out and built a platform in the center. I didn't do it, but my assistant did. And so I turned that into like the really great kind of like workshop is that the one where all the where the all the guitars are in the yeah, seats all on the seats okay, yeah sorry go ahead yeah yeah so um so yeah so it was like a, a a good workshop for us and so we started there uh with dylan mixing this record uh uh um shows from atlanta it was when uh, the olympics were in atlanta and he did some house of blue shows and they asked us to mix them just, you know, I think. And so when he would come in to listen to them and stuff like that. And so during that period, he would go over to the piano and he, he plays something on the piano. And he goes, hey, Daniel, what do you think of that? And Dan goes, that's great. But, you know, I'd like to hear some lyrics. And and then that was all that happened. And then the next day, Bob would come in and play something different. Dan, what do you think of this one? Well, that's great again. But, you know, I really need to hear some songs, you know. And so, and so, and on the the next time we had our friend from New York, uh, um, Tony Mangurian. He's a drummer and producer. He produced a bunch of great records. Um, and so, what it was is Bob started playing the song on the on the piano, and I had a mic in front of him in case he sang or whatever. And so he started singing, "I can't wait, I can't wait," you know, like. And then Tony starts drumming this hip hop beat against it, and it was like. Wow, the hair on my arms went up. I go, this is amazing, you know. And so he only sang like a verse and a chorus. And that's all he did. And so then I took that and I, after he left, I turned that into a song. I just repeated the first chorus and all the verses and stuff. So it sounds like a real song all the way through, but same lyric. So, and Bob is playing uh, the beautiful kind of like gospel type of piano against it. It was really amazing. And then um, with this hip hop beat, it, it was like, oh, okay, now th this is a cool direction to go. And he was, while we were doing that, he goes, what do you think of this kid back? And we said, oh, yeah, he's cool. And he goes, I, I would make a record like that. And so we said, oh, with samples and stuff. So we started on these building these little sample things for him to listen to and stuff like that. So Tony and Dan would play like these little percussion things on top of like these uh, loops that I made of little Walter and stuff like that. And so it sounded like these old blues records with this high quality kind of stuff on top. And, and so, but Bob would always come in every day and he said, between my house uh, and to get to Oxnard, there's this radio station that only comes on in between that uh, peer, in between that space and he said they play all these old blues records and it's it's amazing. And he goes, Why can't I have a record that sounds like that? I said, You can, but we just have to approach it like the old style, you know, old microphones and you know, keep things minimal. And he goes, Oh, cool. And so that's kind of like how it started developing the sound of Time Out of Mind. And so while I'm mixing this uh show from Atlanta, the very last song comes on. I'm mix I've mixed it. And it's got a harmonica. And Bob goes, can you make it sound electric, the harmonica? I said, yeah, sure. And so I took the, the feed from the tape and ran it into a little uh, Ibanez uh, tube screamer. Where it is, this is the one. <laughs> and so I ran it through this. and then That's ran it actually the one? It's actually the one, yeah. And so, uh, and then these are behind me. I'm not sure if you can see, there's a big row of tweed amps. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, I ran it into this like um, 1950s uh, deluxe uh, uh, Fender amp. And so the harmonica come on and it had this like really cool electric kind of vibe. And the, But right after that, 
he starts singing into that same mic and his voice co- goes through the thing and he goes, that's what's that? I go, that's cool. And he goes, I want to put that on all the songs. And so I had to remix everything, putting this vocal amp on it. And so that became the sound of that, that whole, and you'd always say, what's the percentage uh, are we at with the, the clean vocal and the amp? I go, we're about 60, 40 clean. He goes, make it 50, 50. And, you know, like I'd make it. And so that's how I had this gravelly kind of old kind of blues type sound, you know? And so that became the kind of sound of uh, Time Out of Mind, where I would um, uh, take a, a line off of uh, the, his vocal mic feed it through that tube screamer into the, into a little tweed amp. And so he, that was his monitor. I wouldn't, he wouldn't wear headphones and you just hear himself coming out of this broken up, you know, I was like, it, was, it sounded cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's, so that's how it started. Uh, uh, and so I, I was ready. I had all these great things set at Teatro. And then he comes in one day and goes, look, I can't work here. It's, it's too close to home. And so he says, uh, I want to work in Miami. And so we're like, Miami, <laughs> what? we've got a great sound here. And so he goes, no, it's, it's just, I'm not going to get it work done here with the family and all this stuff around me. So we, I moved all, like I brought three old Neve consoles with me, all of my microphones I was working with. Once I got to Miami, the the classic room that they had that, that you know, that they made, you know, Eric Clapton's Ocean Boulevard on and, you know, all the classic records uh, uh, were made in this room but they've changed this room and now that room was their storage place and it had shag rug all over the walls and was is like this, this the old bg's place where bg's recorded before the bg's did some recordings there yeah and so when i got there i didn't like the sound of the room it was, it was they changed the studio around and now it was like this big sound stage and it was a big spitty room and it's where they shoot videos and stuff there and uh, so I couldn't uh, I, I had, from the get go, I was like searching for another place to 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 go. And so I, I called the BG studio. I was like, can we work over at your studio? And they said, no, no, we're busy. And so we couldn't go there. And I found a Masonic temple. I thought I could do a setup in the Masonic temple, and, but they wouldn't let us use it. And so we, we ended up just kind of putting it up with with it in in uh, in Miami at criteria criteria. And um uh, so I built Bob this little tiny uh, apartment with gobos. And so it had windows. And so he was like private to be in there. And, you know, and uh, he had his focal lamp in there and a table and all this stuff. And and uh, and then I had a set of speakers set up in front of him in case I had to do a playback. So because he would refuse to wear headphones. Right. And so uh, so it was, it was it got to be crazy there. And so. We were working on this one track. Um, we we'd recorded um, I Can't Wait already, and uh, we, we got a cool version of it. And uh, I always name my take. So it was like the rag doll version, and then this one had more of a Pink Floyd intro. And so it ended up being this rag doll, doll version that we – it's a completely different vibe of the Can't Wait. He played at the Teatro, and Dan was adamant about getting back to that. And Dan would work up the band before – before Dylan would walk into the studio. And, uh, and so sure enough, Bob walks in right in the middle of him working up this can't wait uh, kind of track to get it back to that gospel thing. And, and Bob goes, what, the, what the hell are you guys doing? And Dan was mimicking Bob, I can't wait, you know, on the microphone and he caught a little bit of that. And so it kind of like uh, jolted him. And uh, so Dan says, I want to, I want to, get back to that can't wait and he goes no we we got it it's done and and uh and he said come on let's let's see if we can get back to that oxnard version you know where it was more gospel he goes no we did it and it's it's done and and he goes i'd never do anything twice the same and then he brought tony garnier into it and he goes tony have i ever done anything exactly the same twice and he goes no no never <laughs> it's like brought tony to be his backup and uh so yeah, so then uh, we 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 gave it a go, and we brought in Tony Mangorian from New York, and and he got about a minute playing into it, and then till Bob stopped it and said it's not working, and so we ended up going with the Ragdoll version of Can't Wait, and so and uh, yeah, it was a uh, pretty pr- crazy because that was you know when when we when Bob walked in the studio and heard Dan singing and his making his voice sound funny and stuff. Um, 
Bob got kind of pissed off. He's like, so he grabs this acoustic guitar and Dan's standing right in front of him and he picks it up and Bob's got like these golf clubs on for whatever reason. And so he grabs the neck of the guitar and the body is over here. And he was like swinging it like this, just at Dan's head. And like, I, I thought, go ahead, hit him, hit him. Because <laughs> <laughs> as Dan smashed the dober on him, I thought, well, if he smashes on Dan's head, this would be better. <laughs> oh my God. So that's kind of like put a halt to Dan being around in the studio. And then it just became me and Bob. Dan's decided he'd get out of the way and let this, uh, everything settle and stuff like that. So he, he kind of took a, as he went into another studio and, you know, was trying to do some mixes on some other songs, but yeah, so it was just me and Bob there for a while. Links to both of Mark Howard's books are in the description where you can pick them up. One is the story book, basically telling the stories about working with all the greats, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, Tragically Hip, and so many more. So we'll have links to both books. Like I said, the first one's the story book. The second one is basically the pictures book. We've showed you some pictures in the videos. Links to that and a lot more. If you want to help the channel, there are links. Subscribe. Check out our podcast. It's a fairly new podcast. It's doing really, really well. And you can hear a lot of our full interviews on our podcast. Share our videos and podcasts and like, comment. We'd appreciate that. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.